Braves baseball is brought to you by Truist. It is a sunny Sunday in Atlanta where the Braves have a chance to win this series over the San Francisco Giants. It's been a rough homestand so far for Atlanta. They've dropped three of the first four against the Yankees and San Francisco, but they've got an ace in the hole coming back from the injured list. Ian Anderson's got the ball for Atlanta in game three. The standings in the National League East, well, the Braves dropped a game. They are now four and a half games ahead of the second place Philadelphia Phillies. So Jeff Francoeur, things still trending very well for Atlanta. A win today puts a little more pressure on the Phillies and the Mets, and they get healthier with Ian Anderson back for the first time in a month. Well, you win today, you take two out of three from the best team yeah. in baseball right now, so that's something in itself there. But I'm excited to see Ian pitch today. You know, he had been really, really good this year early. His last three, four starts before he got injured, Chip, I, maybe we saw a little bit of fatigue. You got to remember, this is his first really full, full season pitching. So maybe the idea, I think you said it the other night, six weeks off, get him some rest. I'll tell you what, his last uh, appearance in the minor leagues, I heard he threw the ball really, really well. Fastball was coming out, changeup was good. So to get him back in this rotation, to me, is going to be huge. Yeah, so the benefit of the weird two days off in the middle of the week schedule for Atlanta it allows Brian Snitker to set his rotation, not just for the Giants, but for the big road trip that starts tomorrow night against the L.A. Dodgers. But first things first, you've got to tangle with the team with the best record, the Giants, who hit a lot of homers. The Braves hit some homers, too. It's been a dramatic series so far. Game three, rubber match coming up in Atlanta with lineups and first pitch after the break. It is a sunny August afternoon in Atlanta. 85 degrees, feels hotter than that. Winds out of the east again at 10 miles an hour. That means blowing out toward the grandstand and the chop house in right field. The Giants lead the world in home runs. They hit a couple of them last night, shutting out Atlanta in game two of our three-game series. So Gabe Kapler puts together this lineup for the San Francisco Giants. Our lineup is always presented by our friends at Toyota. They have Brandon Belt back in the starting lineup. He's playing first base. He'll clean up. He's back off the bereavement list. And it's good to have Ian Anderson, Jeff, back off the injured list for Atlanta starting for the first time since July the 11th. Yeah, you hope. I know it's right shoulder, but with six weeks off that he's feeling good, rested. That's a good fastball to start, so we'll see how that comes out of his hand today. And as you said, just good to have him back in the rotation, taking the ball. And you figure he might be a little amped up. That one just a bit up and away. Yeah, something to keep an eye on. You know, we talk about him trying to get ahead with that fastball sometimes. Opponents hitting 424 off the first pitch. Guys do not want to get to two strikes with Ian. This one popped up on the infield. Who wants it? Freddie Freeman takes over at first base. And that takes care of Wade, who's now one for eight in the series in Atlanta. Good start for Anderson. Soft contact for out number one. I think it's going to be fascinating, Jeff, to see how things transpire for the Braves over the final six weeks. They have the luxury, if they want, of going to a six-man rotation if that's what Alex Anthopoulos and Brian Snitker and Rick Kranitz want to do, but that's predicated on Anderson coming out of this start in good shape for the Braves today. Yeah, well, and look, with Ian getting some time off, if he throws the ball well today, Waskar had three months off. You feel like these guys could be rested, take the ball every five days. And then, like you said, if you want to maybe give a guy a spot start for, for Charlie, you know, push him back a day or two, you can do that. Tommy Lestella's had a big series. Didn't get that change up. And that's Ian's bread and butter. Good pitch, one ball, one strike. Well, and that's what you love about this matchup today. And I, I like that they moved Ian to today. A, you get a pitch at home for him. But B, <clears throat> a lot of these Giants players have never seen any Ian Anderson. And with that change up, it can be tough the first time. Soft contact again. Riley the Rover gets a good look and takes care of La Stella. Two quick outs. Well, you know, Anderson's itching to get back in the win column. It's been a while for him in that regard. His last start, July 11th, you said it best in the opening comments. He wasn't himself his last couple of starts. Tried to pitch through a sore shoulder. That appears to be in good shape. Velocity comes from the shoulder. He's been pumping in the low to mid-90s already today. Yeah, and like you said, the element of surprise. These guys not seen hmm. Ian Anderson's tough. And then you save Smiley to me for the Dodgers with we've all seen if there's one kryptonite for the Dodgers sometimes it's left handed pitching so you get 
two lefties out there in L.A. Yeah, Smiley Monday, Freed Wednesday, Charlie Morton Tuesday. So as you said, those two off days really set the Braves up to be able to kind of do things how they wanted. And Ruff swinging early in the count has the first San Francisco hit. He's aboard with two outs. And we welcome back Brandon Belt, who lost his grandmother on Tuesday, was on the bereavement list and was activated today. Thyro Estrada went back to AAA for Brandon Belt. And with Di Sclafani starting today and coming off the injured list, they designated Tyler Chatwood for assignment. So those are the San Francisco roster moves. Atlanta sent Edgar Santana to Gwinnett to make room for Ian Anderson. These moves might be procedural in a couple of days. Rosters can expand in time for September. Yeah, it's really just affecting the next three days. But Brandon Belt, another guy for this Giants team, along with Crawford and Posey, having a nice comeback year. 896 OPS, 19 homers. One of six guys in the lineup for Gabe Kapler in double digits in homers. He's got 19 of them. And we pointed out earlier in the series the last time the Giants led the major leagues in homers you have to go back to 1972. And yes a lot of it has to do with changing the dimensions. At Oracle Park. Yes but it's still. A rather big place to hit you go to right field left center you still got to hit it. And at night. Yeah that's exactly it's it cold. Wendy. Swing and a miss. There's the change. And Ian quickly ahead of Brandon Belt. One ball, two strikes. Giants have led their division for 105 consecutive days. That is the longest continuous divisional leading stretch since they moved to San Francisco in 1958. They are for real. They are atop the National League West. And after this game the Giants will become huge Braves fans because they'll take on the Dodgers after Atlanta finishes with L.A. That's who the Giants have coming up. San Fran two and a half games in front in the West the Braves four and a half games in front of Philadelphia. Two balls two strikes rough at first with two outs. And off his knuckles into the second deck. Hey great catch. Off to our left. Fan from Hawkinsville, Georgia. Made the grab. Sam Fran fan, though, you know? Well, they have a lot of Giants fans in Hawkinsville. They're Braves yeah. fans, big too. Time, big time Giants area. It's a closet giant. Yep. A lot of people from the Bay Area come to Hawkinsville. A lot to see there. Beautiful. Beautiful part just south of Atlanta, up I 75. As Ian goes three and two. Well, Ian. In his career, no home runs with two strikes. Hitter sitting 150, and it's because of that changeup. It's tough to get aggressive either way. You kind of go into defense mode with two strikes on Ian. Not saying you can't get a hit or you're not going to gap one, but you have to respect that fastball and changeup. Ruff will get a head start. There he goes, and the pitch is taken low. Belt aboard. A single and walk with two outs brings up Brandon Crawford. Crawford 0 for 3 in the series debut last night. And an 0 for, for this guy after the All-Star break is a real rarity. He entered the game yesterday with the best batting average in baseball since July the 1st. And he's been especially deadly in spots like this. 429 average with runners in scoring position and two out. So be careful here in the first inning. With the Giants rejuvenated shortstop Brandon Crawford upstairs ball one. San Fran has gotten first inning homers in each of the first two games of this series one by Posey one by Tommy LaStella last night can't have one here as Crawford didn't get that. It's an even count. That's an A plus changeup. Oh, 
One ball one strike for Brandon Crawford. So after two quick outs Anderson's pitch counts piled up here in the first inning with the rough single. The long hit bat by Belt and now Crawford will see a fourth pitch. He's ahead the count two balls and a strike. Ian about to make his 19th offering of the game. And that was a beauty. It's two and two. Now you'd like to try to make the pitch you want now on this count. Don't leave yourself a little room for air on a three two with the runners going again. Execute this pitch and get out of here. But he couldn't. It's a full count. So again, the Giants runners will be off to the races with two outs. Well, the one thing you like is that he's missing right now. He's missing down. But with that being said, you know, this is where you wonder sometimes. You know a little bit of rustiness coming in location spotting the ball up. Rough and belt. Take off the pitch is laced out of play that's headed for the upper tank. Nice crowd in Atlanta trying to urge Anderson on here. Pitch number 22 coming up. Swing and a fly ball hit toward left, but Rosario is there. His first start as a Brave. Ian Anderson is back from the injured list. Long inning, but a scoreless inning. Giant strand a pair, and the Braves' offense goes to work. Time for the bottom of the first inning Braves country Atlanta trying to pick up their first run since game one they were shot out last night that's saying something as hot as the Braves bats have been a couple of changes on the Toyota starting lineup for Brian Snicker today mentioned it a second ago Eddie Rosario will make his first start in left field Stephen Vogt catching the day game after the night game and the Giants have Anthony D. Sclafani back from injury. Jeff what do you expect from him as he looks for win number 12. Yeah right it left the game August 19th with the right ankle discomfort. Levin wins the season a career high owns a 2 8 away from San Fran. Ford keeps the game chip welcome back Ian. he was great and offensively elevate that pit elevate the pitch 193 on his sinker guys are hitting one uh, sorry 180 on the sinker 193 on the slider you got to get the ball up we saw the Braves last night not have many balls in the air Mr. Webb was very impressive he was he was good but like you said the Braves gave themselves some shots one for ten with runners in scoring position as he all base pops one out of play foul he's riding a four game hitting streak. Ozzie extended that streak last night with a couple of hits. Razor 17 and 6 with Albies out of the leadoff spot for the Braves. And he's got 22 homers on the year at 259 average. The 0-2 pitch is hit right into the shift. And that'll be easy for out number one. Albies retired. Here's Jorge Soler. Now that's one thing you look. Logan Webb last night, De Scalfani tonight, uh, today. The reason the Giants are doing so good, they've got guys that, you know, Gosman was here and landed in pitch grade. De Scalfani, he was okay in Cincinnati, you know, but now these guys have gone to another organization and really turned themselves into great pitchers. As you said, the guy in between Webb last night was really good. So that's why the Giants are in first place. Yeah, their offense has been good. They hit a lot of homers. They play in a great ballpark. Their pitching's been terrific. Well, like you said, you don't get an extended losing streak. That's it. As Jorge Soler bats and takes a strike, even count to him. A little real test for the Braves. The Yankees, the Giants, and then the Dodgers. And let's not forget the Rockies, who are great at home. That's what's upcoming for the Braves on the road trip. Seven critical games. 
And not to mention out in L.A. You get their big three. Rios on Monday night, Bueller on Tuesday night, and Scherzer on Wednesday. So good, good challenge for these Braves hitters. Braves have won 13 straight on the road. But our rather pedestrian, 32 and 32 at home. Let's see if they can go on the road trip back over 500 here at Truist Park. And Soler bats with the bases empty. And one man out. Two balls, two strikes from Di Sclafani. And that one jammed him and rolled to third. Wilmer Flores cuts it off and belt the stretch. And two ground ball outs for the Giants right hander. And it brings up Freddie Freeman. Freddie's cooled off a bit, a quiet homestand. Three hits in 16 at bats. Two of those three hits came last night, both of them singles. Freeman, though, at 296, 27 homers. He's four out of 13 in his career against Di Scalafani. Two of those four hits home runs. I'll say this they have really been working him in and out, doing a good job of, if they go off the plate, kind of off, off the plate. No Buster Posey in the starting lineup for the Giants. Casale catching day game after the night game. They're worried about some concussion symptoms he was displaying up in New York. Obviously cleared those. So that's the San Francisco battery today, and East Clafani's pumping 94. One ball, two strikes. Our Valley Sports crew got a great shot of Di Sclafani during his warm-ups, giving the thumbs up to the bullpen coach, pitching coach, saying he was good to go. Ankle problem knocked him out of the second inning of his game against the Mets. And he is throwing hard early. Two balls, two strikes. Mentioned the Phillies are home with Arizona. They're up 2 0 over the Diamondbacks. That's in the second inning. Mets have scored first at home against Washington. That's 1 0, also second inning. We'll keep you posted on those scores all afternoon long. And you can follow along on the Valley Bar at the bottom of your screen. And now, full count. Chopper hit toward Belt, and he's going to race to the bag in time. And Di Sclafani, three ground ball outs to start his day. Nothing doing in the Atlanta first. We go to the second, no score. Time for the second inning. No score here in Atlanta. Wilmer Flores, Mike Yastrzemski, and Kurt Casale are coming up. For San Francisco. Good series for Wilmer Flores. Three hits, including a home run. He's got 16 of those on the season. Flores getting a lot of playing time at third base because Evan Longoria has got a hand problem. He was hit by a pitch a couple of weeks ago, and that hasn't healed fully yet. Giants are hoping to have him back by the time the Braves get to San Francisco for their lone trip to Oracle Park. That's going to begin September 17th. They went though. Flores, rough. They keep hitting the ball though. Their way they're hitting it. It's gonna be tough to take them out of the lineup. Chris Siegel has the plate today. That was high. Two balls and a strike. Wilmer Flores. Good fastball hitter. Whacked into left field. That was a changeup. Rosario ranges to his right. Flores, big turnaround first. And a perfect throw holds him to a long single. Great throw out there in left field by Rosario. Look at the double off the bat. You said floor is not great speed. Gets a change up. Oh. Rosario does a good job of getting over the ball and then throws a strike. Tazi. 
First leadoff man on for the Giants here in the second inning. Yastrzemski's up. He two with three hits, including a home run in the series. Now 21 homers, which matches his career high. He'll fly by that at this pace for San Francisco. The pitch he is whacked out of play to the left. No balls and a strike. Fastball nicely delivered 0 and 2. Always the cautionary tale for young pitchers especially when they come off the injured list you don't really know what you're going to get a time or two through the rotation. So you can understand some. Early misses for Anderson. But he gets a roll over here. There's one Riley the stretch at second that is a four five put out that forces Flores and Yastrzemski's aboard with one out second ground ball out for Ian Anderson today. Yeah good pitch got him out front got the rollover like you wanted but you see where Ozzy kind of where he was shaded with Yastrzemski's speed not going to get the double play got the smart out even with a quick turn I don't think he gets him. Kurt Casale has a 216 average. Buster Posey's back up. And that one smashed towards short. Short hop, and that'll be an easy turn. No man's land for Yastrzemski. Casale hit it right on the button, but the Braves get a double play to end a very quick San Francisco second. Atlanta's infield defense has been great all year. Nice pick, nice turn, nice result, no score. Home second coming up. No score in Atlanta on a very hot Sunday afternoon. Speaking of hot, that's how you describe Austin Riley, Jeff R. Zaxby's indescribably good play. Yeah, been one of the best third basemen in baseball this year. Can't say enough about those numbers, but again, too, you can't say enough about his defense at third base. He says probably the top third baseman in the National League this year. Or his play as the Rover and right oh, or a sure. guy that tries to get the turn on a double play a to go. I mean he's done it all. He has There's only two errors in his last 60 games. He's doing some work. As many hard balls as you get hit right down the third baseline the little slow rollers you got to come charge. How many great defensive plays did he make on the perfect road trip at third base in critical eighth or ninth inning situations. He saved a couple of games to my recollection. Well that's what you know we showed you on screen last night Brian McCann Mark DeRosa the game and was talking to them after the game on the way home and they were saying it's unbelievable Logan Webb was so good last night but Austin Riley had some just unbelievable bats off him. Not this time to start his day against Di Sclafani his first strikeout he's retired the first four in order. And you're right about Riley two hits in that line drive to third so he swung the bat very well in his four trips. Just climbed the ladder on that one. It's funny the Braves got the third lowest OPS in baseball during day games this season. And their batting average 217 is the worst. How does that happen. So maybe some night owls on the team. Well, there was a time where that wasn't possible. They weren't old enough to be night owls like you and me. As Jack Peterson is the hitter. They move him to the fifth spot today. One left handed hitter, but two great numbers head to head against Di Sclafani. Six career hits, four homers. Yeah, that'd be a good reason. Notice well, with Jack Peterson, he's kind of got the reverse Matty Diaz going. Yeah, he does. The lean back. Look, and, and he's had some bad luck this series. First two at bats Friday night, hit two balls, absolutely roped him. Remember to right center and left center. And Austin Slater was playing so deep.
Jock tried to get out of the way there, but that'll cost him a strike. Two and one the count. Like so many of these new guys that aren't so new anymore for the Braves, I'll say guys they acquired either before or at the trade deadline. Jock got off to a blistering hot start. He's cooled off a bit. Six hits in his last 47 tries. And now he's got a 2 2 count. Took a little punishment on that foul ball. So Peterson, 15 homers, 54 RBIs, a 235 average overall. Day off for that man, Adam Duvall. He's getting ready for Urias and the Dodgers in L.A. tomorrow night. The 2 2 pitch. We're in the final days of August. It's been a great month for the Braves so far. Four and a half game lead in the East, the pitch. And that's headed for the seats. And Snickers ball club has picked up five and a half games in the standings. Remember, this is also a team that was seven and a half games back in the middle of June. That guy's kept it all together, and the acquisitions at the deadline were just what the Braves needed to this point. As this one's lifted in the air to center. Yastrzemski has plenty of room and he's going to put that away for the second out. Just missed that pitch. So five retired by DiSclafani in a row to start the game. Here's Dansby. Dansby's one for eight in the set. Dansby's seven game hit streak came to an end last night with an 0 for 4. But great work since the All Star break. He's bumped his average up 22, 24 points. Hitting for power, getting big hits, Jeff, and making consistent contact, which is always a key. Yeah, his strikeout rate's dropped big time. And for him, that means more hits, more putting the ball in play, more productivity. That'll get your attention. Yeah, wake you up. Now the 2 0. Hung it, but got away with it. Two balls and a strike. Dean Sclafani, originally drafted by Toronto out of the University of Florida, was part of that gigantic 13 player trade with Mark Burley, Jose Reyes, Josh Johnson, and the like. Then was traded to the Reds and then the Giants got him on a one year deal and boy as he paid huge dividends with 11 victories for the first place Giants Dansby pops up three up three down in the Atlanta second still no score at Truist Park. To the third we go mention will be in San Francisco will the Braves on September 17th always fun to take a peek at how different the ballparks line up dimensions wise that's our Statcast 3D presented by Google Cloud Oracle Park in the light blue or turquoise color and of course it's overlaid here at Truist Park as you said Jeff right center is a real tough place and straight away right they've got that very high wall yeah they do and like I said the difference out there it's like the winds always kind of blowing in. As you said, you see left field a little shorter out there, but you know, it's one of the tougher places to hit, which is to me what's impressive when you look at what the Giants have done with 197 home runs this year. But the Braves right behind them at 184. So two top home run hitting teams. Also two division lead division leading teams. So that's our team comparison brought to you by Yellowwood. That's our bringing the lumber feature is Anthony DiSclafani. Leads off against Ian Anderson. And takes a strike. One of the funny things about Oracle Park when they built that beautiful new facility. They had to shoehorn it in in the China Basin area. 
As that one's popped into center field right at Peterson for the first out. They did such a remarkable job with the fuse and making it part of that downtown vibe that is off Market Street and the like in San Francisco. But they forgot one thing. One very important thing. Either well, they either forgot or they had a great deal of confidence in their starting pitching. <laughs> yeah. Well, they forgot to put bullpens in. Yeah, exactly. And that's why the bullpens were in foul territory, like they used to be at Wrigley Field. They've since moved them. We understand. Yeah. But we should just that 197 home runs. Let's show you how hard it is. They've hit 81 at home, 116 on the road. That's, That's a big difference. Yeah. 35 more home runs on the road. Lamont Wade popped out his first time up. And he tries to bunt. Folks got to hurry. Fast runner. Pounces can't make the play. It's a bunt. And a single for Lamont Way that starts a rally for the Giants one on one out. What a beautiful bunt. Ian Anderson no chance to get there. One of those surprises he put it far enough out that. Smart. Job by both to just hold it. That's a ball you could have easily thrown away. You and I were talking before the game. I wonder if that's something the Braves will try to exploit and see just how good De Sclafani's ankle is. Yeah. You might see someone try to do it. At least get him moving. So here's Lestella. He grounded out his first time up. Braves shift for him. Heck, they shift for just about everybody. And that's in for a strike going one. Giants gave Lestella a three year deal after stints with the Cubs and the Angels. Of course, he got to the big leagues with the Braves back in 2014. Chris Siegel let you know where the pitch was. I like that. One ball, one strike. Giants with their road grays, Braves with their home alternate cream colored uniforms. I like these togs. For Atlanta, red and navy script across the chest. Clean looking uni. One ball, one strike. Wind blowing toward right. No score. Wade at first takes off. Pitch a strike. Votes throw is going to be off target and Wade's in safely. They had him dead to rights with a good throw. They did. He didn't get a great jump. It was a good pitch out of the zone for O to get a even a halfway decent throw. They get him. Ball kind of sailed on him. So way to perfect five for five in steals. And a man in scoring position, one out for Lestella, who's down to his last strike. A one and two count for him. Aaron Ruff waits on deck the pitch. It's two and two. Arizona got a run back in Philadelphia. Phillies two Diamondbacks one. That game's in the third inning. That's Madison Bumgarner pitching for Arizona. Rangers Suarez for the Phillies. Two two pitch. Low full count. Changeup's been in and out for Anderson. Again, that's a, a touch pitch, a field pitch. If anything was going to be off, I would think, Jeff, that would be the one. Yeah. You've seen some really good ones. You've seen some ones just missed by quite a bit. So let's see what he does with a full count. That's out of play, left side. Having trouble catching the ball cleanly today. They've got the fans in motion trying to stay cool. So smart move. Yeah. Catch it on the bounce. That's it. Well, they've tried to do that a lot so far with mixed results. Three balls, two strikes. 
on the ground. Tricky hop. Ozzy stayed with it. Runner to third is Wade with two outs. And now Darren Ruff is your hitter. All kind of jumped on Ozzy. That's a ball you'll see Ozzy kind of come in on a little bit more, but had plenty of time. Rough two hits in the series, including an RBI and a first inning single today for the Giants. A little more pressure on vote here on those change ups low. Got to knock that down and keep a fast runner 90 feet away here. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, that's one of the few curveballs we've seen from Ian today. See if he starts trying to mix that in a little bit more the second time through the lineup. Made him throw a strike and Ian got the change up over. Two and one, your count. Great location. Running in on him. There's a heater. It's two and two. So to Mike Soroka's point that he made the other day, don't have to throw that third pitch a lot. It's got to be in Ruff's head, as well as the fastball change up. Let's see what Ian chooses here with a 2 2 count. Wade dancing off third. The pitch is right back where it came from. It knocked his glove off. Ozzy's throw to first is in time. That'll end the inning. Is Anderson all right? I think he said it got his jersey top on the way by. A screaming Mimi back through the box. And that jersey slowed the ball down enough for Ozzy Albies to recover. Yeah, what a break. One, four, three. Hit that ball didn't hit him. It's a knock. Download the MLB Ballpark app, the official app of Truist Park. Access and share your tickets, place a mobile concessions order, use the Truist Park interactive map, and more. Visit braves.com slash ballpark app or download it in your app store. Ian Anderson had the right size jersey to keep this game scoreless. That's huge. That ball doesn't hit him. That's a knock on an RBI to right field. So a 1 4 3 put out ends Darren Ruff's chance to be a hero for the moment. And now Eddie Rosario making his first start as a Brave. Will lead off the third inning. Rosario, four homers in his last 31 at bats on his rehab stint with Gwinnett. He had an oblique problem when the Braves acquired him from the Indians. See if he can get something started. As this one's poked off the end of the bat, that might find some green grass. His first hit is a Brave, a single to center. Well, we saw a great at bat from him last night. Came in in the pinch hit spot against Webb. It was Webb's last battery face, drove it to left center for a hit. This ball he gets off the end of the bat, but it's able to serve it in the middle. I, I told you, Chip, this guy had 32 home runs and 109 RBIs just two years ago. So. So, welcome officially to the Braves as Stephen votes your batter. Votes the Braves catcher. Three for 14 this year against the Giants. Some of that work came while Stephen was toiling with the Diamondbacks. And that's downstairs. One ball, no strikes. Out away for an even count. It's one and one. Braves and Dodgers in LA tomorrow night. We'll 
have it for you here on Valley Sports as you see the Giants alignment for vote. One one pitch. Hit high in the air to the right side. Lestella should have room in foul ground. Belt joins in. Who wants it? It's near the netting. And the wind pushes that out of play for the San Francisco defenders. One ball, two strikes. Now that ball just kept drifting. Tell you what, are you gonna are we doing Red Bull coffee tomorrow night? Yeah, I think so. 10-10. Well, I look at it this way. I know that our colleague Rick Monday is up. Watching our game right now in LA, scouting us out. Yep. To get all the inside dirt for the Dodgers radio broadcast tomorrow night. I think it's first night, I think it's fine. It's going to be night two and three that. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Well, as you said, some people are night owls, some are. Sure, aren't. you're up anyway. We're going to find out, aren't we? We are. <laughs> we are going to find out. 10 10 first pitch, Eastern Time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then the Braves head to Colorado for that four game series with the Rockies, who are very tough at home. Runner goes, pitch is a strike. The throw to second is not. And Rosario is in scoring position after a vote was rung up. One on, one out. Got a good jump. Stole that easy. <laughs> Steve, vote didn't seem too thrilled about the strike three call. So Rosario's first steal is a brave, his 10th overall on the year. Let's see if Anderson can help himself. Ian batting 077 on the year. And a swing and a miss. Are Red Bull and coffee my only choices, or can we go off the board for 100, Alex? We, we can go off the board. <laughs> I was talking more kind of the start of the game. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like the way you think more and more. No balls in a strike in a scoreless game. And an even count for the Braves pitcher Ian Anderson. Look, it's great to have this kid back in the rotation. He's so talented, pitched so well for the Braves down the stretch and in the playoffs last year. If there is a silver lining to his time on the IL, well, got plenty of rest. Once he gets back in a groove, you figure he'll be a huge part of the Braves' rotation over these final six weeks and hopefully farther into October than last year. The Braves were making a nice little run without Waskar and Ian, and that's what made you excited thinking about, okay, they're winning. You, they continue to get healthy, and now you add them back into the rotation, you're only going to get better, only going to get deeper. And Anderson is down on strikes, back to back punch outs for De Scalafani. He's got three of them. And now Ozzie Albee is up for a second time after he grounded out to start the game for the Braves offense. In these years, the Giants are having, they're no flukes. Di Sclafani has won 11 games. He's 5 and 3 on the road, sub 3 ERA. So I'm saying they don't really have that. You know, Gosman's probably, I would guess, considered their top of the line ace guy just because of his numbers, but they just have really good pitching all the way around. Not that, they don't have that horse. You know, the guy that you just say, oh, that's your number one starter in a playoff game. Well, like you said, they, they had Bumgarner and Kane flip exactly. a back in the day, right? But it's, they got great options. We haven't even seen Johnny Cueto or Alex Wood in this series. Wood's won 10 games for San Francisco. As Ozzy ahead in the count, pops that one out of play foul. Giants have a tough test. They get to face two division leaders in back to back series. After wrapping things up with the Braves, they head home for four with the Brewers. And then you said, right, then the Dodgers after that for three? Correct. So that's quite the 10 games for them. And those are the last three regular season games between the Giants and Dodgers. That's rather odd. One ball, one strike. Tapper foul from Ozzy. It's now one and two. And in case you wondered how the Giants have done against LA this year, well, 
They split 16 games, eight and eight. San Fran 36 and 18 this year against the National League West, 19 and nine against the National League East. And scoreless in game three so far. One ball, two strikes. Rosario at second after a leadoff hit and steal. Back to back strikeouts. A vote and Ian Anderson. Now Ozzie behind. One ball, two strikes. Didn't chase that one. That's been his kryptonite at times this year. That high heat. And Ozzie has it even two balls, two strikes. Sclafani back to work. I was about to say that D. Sclafani is deliberate. He's definitely taking his time out there. I guess it's kind of like one of those pro golfers, right? You don't mind if they take their time if they're playing good or pitching good. It's when they take their time and they're 12 over after three. I wouldn't want to hit it either then, right? <laughs> Two balls, two strikes. So we're ready. Two balls, two strikes. And Ozzie chased that ball. He thought he tipped it, but he's going to be rung up. And three straight strikeouts from Di Scalfani after the leadoff hit. To the fourth we go. It is the rubber game of this series. No score, Braves and Giants. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. And by Truist, BBNT and SunTrust are now Truist. Good pitching in Atlanta as you see our live cam brought to you by Xfinity. Another big crowd for the series wrap up between the Braves and the Giants. Ian Anderson back in rotation for the first time since July 11th for the Braves after some shoulder discomfort sidelined him. He'll have Belt Crawford and Flores coming up for San Francisco. Here's a good one. Good curveball. One ball, one strike. I well, we saw him throw a couple to rough now, one to Belt. So starting to see him mix that third pitch in. A little squibber hit toward third. Nothing the Braves can do about that. Brandon Belt with an infield hit. And that is the second San Francisco leadoff man to reach. Shift cost Atlanta there and belts aboard for a second time in the series. Yeah just number right off the end of the bat. Crawford lined out in the first inning with a couple of runners aboard. So Brandon is 0 for 1 in the game. And foul at first. Nice play. That's Antoine Richardson, the first base coach for the Giants. He and Jazz Chisholm have something in common, both from the Bahamas yep. as big league players. Chisholm with the Marlins. 
and Richardson now coaching under Gabe Kapler and his big league staff. No balls and a strike. Most of Crawford's power has come before the All Star break. To this point, just one of his 19 homers has come in the second half of the season. Still very dangerous. 2 1 pitch. Can't throw it any better no, than that. I was going to say, that's, that's a 2 1 fastball that as a hitter you can't do anything with. So a big pitch went Ian's way. Let's see if he can capitalize. Two balls, two strikes. There's the soft contact. Two long throws, though. There's one. And Riley's turn won't be in time. So Anderson starting Jeff to rack up some ground ball outs. And Wilmer Flores, the hitter, with a man aboard, one down. Yeah, starting to get it down on the ground like he wants to. And see Crawford. Perfect pitch. Hasn't seen that curveball yet. Got him out in front. Got him to roll over. So six ground ball outs for Ian Anderson in the game. Flores let off the second with a base hit. Another ground ball. You feel like you have a shot to double up Wilmer Flores. One ball, no strikes for Wilmer Flores. No score. Popped up. And that'll be playable for Ozzy Albies. And he backpedals for the second out. Flores jammed himself. Mike Yastrzemski is coming up. But first, a quick message from Truist. BB and T and SunTrust are now Truist. Together for better. That was a good pitch. Jammed him. Slow roller right at Freddie Freeman. Thank you very much. And Ian Anderson works around that leadoff hit. Seven ground ball outs for him. Now the Braves bats are trying to give him some runs. No score heading to the bottom of the fourth inning. Giants have out hit the Braves four to one so far. Let's see if Jorge Soler can change that. Jeff, he is our Sonova's Greatness Made Here feature. Look what he's done in his new home in Atlanta. Yeah, he's put on quite a show, but not just the power chip. Look at that. He's hitting 375, but his on base finish 500. We've seen a great eye from Jorge Soler since he's been over here with the Braves, getting on base, taking his walks, and of course the huge home run in game one here Friday night. With the Braves, 21 strikeouts, 18 walks, and a 393 on base. Yeah, that'll work. His on base with Kansas City was 288. Much bigger sample size, 70 more games. 
And this one's popped up a mile high behind home plate. Casali will give chase and we'll run out of room. And a ball and a strike. Big miss inside, two balls and a strike. Swing and a drive. Look how far that one's going to go. Way over the bullpen. Way up into the Hank Aaron Terrace. For the Braves, their first run since the first game of this series in the seventh inning. And a mammoth homer. It was Solaire who did it. Holy smokes. That one he hit the other night was a line drive three run homer. This one, Chip, was an absolute bomb. As you said, third row of the Hank Aaron Terrace. And that is a hanging slider. That baseball's flat on one side. Uh, yeah, the baseball's done. That ball was loud. So seventh home run for Solaire in a Braves uniform. Atlanta strikes first off Di Scalafani. And this one on the ground into the shift. Long throw. Freeman beat it out. Another infield hit for Freddie. I'll tell you what. I, I wonder if some of these teams, yes, I would shift Freddie in a certain way, but these guys can't play that far back. I think Freddie Chip now, this, he's showing, look, I can beat that ball out. That was a pretty decent throw by LaStella. Got there and easily beat it out, honestly. So the flying feet of Freddie Freeman. Say that six times fast. Back-to-back -back hits for the Braves. And that's out of play to the right side. Dr. No how is trying that by the way you should see him. He's mumbling away to our right our great stat man upstairs. Well, he did Bruce Park did say someone's going to hit a home run this inning right before the inning. We don't call him Dr. No, no for nothing. And he had the nice smirk once Solaire hit it. If you knew how you would know Jeff that he has that smirk all the time. <laughs> yeah. He's not Dr. No for a reason, as I said, and it's no with a K. Braves lead 1 0 on the Solaire home run, leading off this fourth inning. Austin Riley struck out his first time. He's quickly behind 0 and 2. And that one is off the mask of Chris Siegel, the home plate umpire. That two and I opener, that was a Direct hit. Oh. Ooh. Right in the face mask. It's amazing the amount of training that catchers and umpires have. They still don't flinch. They don't turn their head. Runner goes. Freddie takes off. Close play. He's in safe. Freddie's doing it with his legs now. Infield hit. Now a stolen base. Now for Freddie to go, you know he knows he can time it up perfect. Gets a great jump. Always talk about see Freddie steal between seven, ten bags a year, it seems like, and every time. Not only does he do that, the important keep the foot on the bag. We saw that on the play against the Yankees when he was really safe. Yes. Yeah, well, that was there. But remember Austin Riley when he went to second, actually the foot 
beat the tag but it slid right off. So a hit means a run one ball two strikes big lead at second for Freddie Freeman. So game is kind of plodding along on this sweltering Sunday. Brave score first. I'd like to see him add on here with a big inning in the fourth. Braves are a perfect 10 out of 10 in stolen bases in the month of August. I like the fact that that part of, frankly, every team's game is becoming more and more a part of the offensive show. Well, look, now you got the four, five, six hitters up with Freddie at second. You give yourself three chances to get a hit and score another run. Riley protected the plate there. Nicely done. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a drive. That ball is golfed. Oh, one iron. Wow. If that didn't go over the wall, Jeff, that would have gone through the wall. Well, how then say they're going to be two home runs at this inning, but Austin Riley just absolutely, as you said, a one iron drop the head on it. 57 two strike hits, second in the NL. Look, he got him up. That's how he struck him out the first time. Almost struck him out this AB up. Well, he missed down, and Austin Riley, we saw last night the hardest ball he might have hit was that line drive to Flores, the third off mm -hmm. the sidearm. So Riley now 28 homers. He's up to 80 RBIs. Can you say MVP candidate? A hundred percent. Look, we've seen it for a month. I know he said top 10. I, I'm putting him inside that top five now. If you've seen what he's done with the Braves coming back, you know, hopefully going to win the division. I, I don't know that there's, you know, five guys that have been more valuable to their team. I really don't. Well, it's going to be a fascinating race. Look, Tatis is going to get a bunch of votes. Bryce Harper, Joey Votto, Freddie Freeman, Austin Riley, Ozzy Albies. You could vote for Dansby Swanson, too, with his huge second half. Little bouncer by Jock Peterson. Race to the bag, and he beat it. Little indecision. Belt wants the Giants to check it. Bang, bang, play at first. Jordan Baker said that Jock Peterson beat the rap. Well, D. Scalpani's mad at himself right here because he didn't get running over there with that ankle of his. You'd wonder when someone was going to challenge him. Oh, yeah, he beat it. I think Andrew Bailey obviously is coming out to give him a breather. But that's a ball for Di Scalfani. You see the first baseman slow chopper. You got to be at first base. Well, that's what I was wondering earlier in the game. Would the Braves try to punt just to see? They yeah. didn't have to in this inning with two home runs. But there may be an indication of either indecisiveness or the ankle. Yeah, look, it feels Not okay to pitch, yeah. but yeah. when you're talking about running, covering bases, covering bunts, that was gingerly. He ran over there. So a big inning for Atlanta. They lead by three. Jack Peterson tried to cool off. And Hansby Swanson, the hitter, he popped up. Four straight hits for Atlanta in the inning. Homer, single, Homer, single. If the pattern follows, Dansby's going to hit a home run here. He's got 25 of them. A strike. Dan's be not sure about that. Oh. 
Solera Homer in the Hank Aaron Terrace. Austin Riley with a moonshot over the 385 sign. And now it's 0 and 2 for the Brave shortstop. Nice block by Casale, but that's going to allow Peterson to move up. A great dirt ball read. He saw that ball spiked and came off hard off Casale's chest. He took off. Good Lord, that pitch was like 52 feet. So a very wild pitch. It means a run. It's all coming apart for Di Sclafani here in the fourth inning. Well, it's being hot too, humid here. You wonder how long. On the ground, deep short. Crawford's got it, throws back behind the runner at second. Peterson, good base running, is in safely. Infield hit for Swanson. Good try by Crawford. Only move you had. He tried to kind of back pick Jock Peterson. Never was going to be able to throw Dansby out across the diamond. This might be it. Looks like they go check on him first. It's Dave Greshner, the athletic trainer. Gabe Kapler is going to go out as well. They want to make sure the ankle's in good shape for Di Sclafani. This will also buy time for the bullpen, which just got up. Sammy Long is playing catch. We were told that if Di Sclafani in his warmups couldn't go, it was going to be Long getting the emergency start. Well, I think they're checking on him. I think this is also saying, you know what, we got a couple lefties coming up a chance. We need to keep this game right here at 3 0. So Di Sclafani will leave after three plus innings, two homers, and five consecutive Atlanta hits. It's all Braves in game three. Three nothing Braves because of these two guys right here Jorge Soler, absolute bomb into the Hank Aaron Terrace on a slider. And then Austin Riley gets a sinker in and continues his hot hitting. And lines it in the left field stands. Three nothing Braves. And now they got first and second chip. And Sammy Long's on. Who's an interesting story. Originally drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays in the 18th round five years ago. On the last day of spring training in March of 18, Long was released. And at the age of 25 years old, this kid took EMT classes, thinking about becoming a firefighter. Took a year off from playing baseball, then signed a minor league contract with the White Sox. Did not play last year because of COVID and the cancellation of minor league baseball. He became a free agent. Then the Giants signed him with an invitation to spring training. He got to the major leagues on June the 9th and beat the Phillies on June 20th for his first career victory. So talk about a yeah. roundabout way to the show. That's the case for Sammy Long. And first pitch to Rosario is popped up. Long run belt. Wind will push that into the stands down the right field line. Strike one. Well, a little bit like Max Fried in the fact that you saw the 71, 72 mile per hour curveball and 93 to 95 on the fastball. Sprinkle on a change up a little bit more. He's done a pretty good job for him. That's why I said I think Di Scalfani look his ankles not feeling great but I think right here is an important moment where I think they felt like with these two lefties coming up and Di Scalfani kind of you know scuffs a little bit this inning this is where they wanted to try to keep it at keep the team in the game. No balls in a strike and look after this series they've got four games with the Brewers they're going to need Di Scalfani and company against the Dodgers they got to yep. make sure their rotations intact for Los Angeles their final three games with the Dodgers Braves have five hits in the inning two on nobody out the Giants have been a field a long time and this one shot toward belt 
who made the play in a catcher's crouch. Good job by the Braves base runners, Peterson and Swanson, to retreat. And they're at first and second now with one out. Well, he's got funny. He's got nothing but ground balls. Had some strikeouts, three strikeouts in the third. And it just kind of unraveled for him in the fourth. Home run, single, home run, single, single. We saw it the other night. Braves went from 4 2 to 6 4 in two pitches. That's the great thing when you talk about the length of this lineup now and be able to hit the long ball. You can put a crooked number up on teams fast. Steven Vogt, the batter, he struck out his first time and off into that pitch, strike one. Well, you're right, Jeff, with the acquisitions of Duvall and Soler, the Braves now have six players who have 20 or more home runs as big league players this year. Yeah. So that talks about depth and damage. Absolutely. During the first 115, 118 games, so often if the first four guys didn't do it, it was going to be really hard to get done. That's not the case now. Three runs on five hits. Vote the seventh man to hit in this long fourth inning for Atlanta. And nothing in two. The 0 2 pitch. 50 footer. Or in the Atlantic League, you'd say that's a 51 footer. Again, I'm swinging it too, try to make that one a little bit nastier. The Atlantic League, of course, the experimental training ground for. Some of the rules changes we've seen in the big leagues pitching mount at 61 feet six inches. One two count. Line out of play we'll do it again. And a fin from Clemson South Carolina dropped it. Wow. That hit off two people never hit the ground. But a fan from Union City Georgia was there to make the play on the ricochet. Fine catch. One deck below us here at Truist Park. One ball, two strikes. That stayed high. It's two and two. Putting up a good fight here. Love it. Two on one out three in for the Braves they have six hits and vote is retired. Nice pitch from long two outs and now Ian Anderson with a nice long rest and a three run lead will try to help himself. He's throwing a lot of curveballs and then he pulled the string on him after a couple fastballs tough pitch. Good sequence. Anderson struck out in the Braves third. And that one cued off the end of the bat. Strike one.
Good curveball. Two signature series for the Braves at home this year. They took two out of three from the Dodgers, trying to take two out of three from San Francisco. And Anderson will force Long to make another pitch. Braves have knocked Anthony DiSclafani out. Whose magic ran out here in the fourth inning. Now the one two pitch is sharply hit to second and Lestella will make the throw to first the Giants were a field for a long time. Let's see if that has effect as we go to the fifth inning Atlanta plays long ball against the NL West leading Giants Solero solo shot Austin Riley a two run homer Braves three San Francisco nothing after four. It's impressive. Um, obviously, I've been watching all the games when I was in Gwinnett and with Gwinnett, and um, I'm excited to play. You know, out there with all the new guys, they've, they've kind of what they've done has kind of spoken for itself, and we would definitely not be in the, the position we're in without them. So, um, I've had a chance to, to see them play, but not not get out there with them. So, uh, it's it's going to be fun. Hey, good to know Ian's been watching the games, Jeff, and we've been happy to watch him today. Four innings of shutout ball in his return. First game back since the 11th of July. Yeah, and it seems to me the last two innings, you've seen him lock in a little more with location. I felt like that we both saw that change up early on in and out of the strike zone, missing some, but seems to be having a better idea now and really said four good innings so far. Ian spotted him a 3 nothing lead now. I've got him with eight ground ball outs, which is always important as Casali then the pitcher's spot, then Lamont Wade coming up for San Francisco. Anderson's got to get through five with the lead to qualify for victory number six. What's the longest time you were out between big league games due to injury? Missed a couple weeks. I never I, I was very fortunate. I never was on the back then called the DL but I was never on the IL in my career. OK so in the minor leagues you bunted the ball off your well face yeah. right so you missed some time. My point is it had to be rusty it had to feel weird to get back in the box just like it would for Anderson missing this much big league time to come back and face hitters the caliber of the Giants. Yeah and you, you go down and you have your starts in the minor leagues try to get yourself right but like you said the motivation the adrenaline all that's mm -hmm. not really there so it's kind of hard you might feel good but until you get up here on the ground right at the brave shortstop Casale is out number one until you get up here you just don't really know and that's why you know two weeks ago we were wondering what Waskar would do down in Miami pitched really well down there and same thing today you were wondering uh, Ian Anderson how sharp he could be and I, I said I, I like it because I feel like he's gotten stronger as the game's gone on. To me, he looks more comfortable. Like I said, with that change up too, it's tough when you're facing this for the first time to be able to know how to square it up. And Ian's not trying to strike everybody out, doesn't have one yet. But what I like, Jeff, now nine ground outs if he's been paying attention, and he said he was, he knows how well Atlanta's defense has been playing. And another ground ball here. This one should be easy for Ozzy. And Long is out number two. Back to the top of the order, but first a quick message from Delta. Reconnect with more. Delta, the official airline of the Atlanta Braves. That might be the Braves charter, by the way. That exact plane. Right there? Yep. Getting ready to. Yeah, they'll see it in a couple hours. Load the guys up and head west to Los Angeles to start a series with the Dodgers tomorrow night. Drew Smiley and Julio Urias will get things started. Our coverage will start at 9:30 with Braves Live. Charlie Morton, Walker Bueller on Tuesday night. Max Fried, Max Scherzer. Who a battle of Maxes. That's three pretty good pitching matchups out there. Into 
Colorado for the Rockies. Phillies leading Arizona and Madison Bumgarner 3 1. Mets lead the Nationals 3 2 in the fifth. But the Braves don't care about that score if they take care of their score, which is 3 0 Braves in the fifth inning today. Really starting to dart and drop for Ian Anderson now to Jeff's point. More comfortable, more movement, and not a lot of hard contact after the first couple of times up. Last time we saw Wade drop a beautiful bunt down the third baseline. There's some hard contact, and it's whacked to center. Peterson to the middle of the warning track, though, has room. Wade gave it a ride. But that will retire the Giants in order. Ian Anderson's qualified for the win. The Braves try to add on. It's 3 0. We welcome you back to another beautiful Hyundai Sunday in Atlanta. The Braves and the San Francisco Giants wrapping up a three game series. Braves trying to earn their second win on this brief five game homestand. And it's a hot one. Feels like temperature in the mid 90s. Two long homers. The story offensively Ian Anderson, five shutout, four hit innings. The pitching story. Mark your calendars for Los Bravos night, Friday, September 10th. You'll get a Los Bravos t shirt and your game ticket with the Los Bravos ticket package presented by Georgia Power. The players will be wearing their Los Bravos uniforms. That'll be a lot of fun as well. So get your tickets for Los Bravos night today at Braves.com slash Los Bravos. Giants need innings out of Sammy Long. Atlanta needs some insurance from the likes of Ozzy Albies. The Braves leadoff man turns around. That's right handed and takes a strike. He's 0 for 2 so far in the game. Yeah, only one appearance from the right side this series for Ozzy, but it was a big one. Double on the gap Friday night. No balls, two strikes. This one poked into shallow right. Wade coming on and almost overran it. Nice recovery by the Giants right fielder. That takes care of Ozzy for out number one. Here's Soler, a mammoth home run. Broke the ice for the Braves offense. And snapped a 13 inning scoreless streak for the Atlanta offense. It was a no doubter. His seventh homer is a brave into the Hank Aaron Terrace. It was loud. Remember Soroka was saying on Monday, last Monday night versus the Yankees, I can't wait to see him get a hold of one. We've seen him hit some home runs, but that was that was the farthest one he's hit yet. Good live fastball. And long ahead, one ball, two strikes. He's retired four straight since relieving Di Sclafani, who lasted three plus, and another high fly ball to left. To the warning track. And enough room for Ruff to put it away. Soler just missed a second homer, two outs. I tell you what, that ball with the wind's not blowing in like it is kind of the right field. On a normal hot day, humid day here in Atlanta, that ball might be gone. Ruff was smiling about it. Yeah. And Freddie Freeman, the hitter, an infield hit, stole a base, and then scored ahead of Riley's two run homer. Ninety four runs now scored by Freddie Freeman this year.
Freddie has a great chance this year to score 100 or more runs in a season for the third time. He first did it in 2016. In 2019, Freeman scored 113 runs. He's at 94 now. I was going to say, I think he'll go past his career high. I think he'll score more than 113. So he led the league in runs last year, led the league in doubles last year, won the MVP, leads the league in runs scored this season. And that's the name of the game, isn't it? Score runs. And he's been doing it in bunches. As that's pop foul, two balls, two strikes. You can see him making a conscious effort, continuing to try to poke that ball right down the third baseline with the lefty. And I mean, look, the, the pitch here, if he can make a fastball into Freeman, it's the pitch, but a lot of guys are scared to try to do it. That's sure. Yeah, Shot I was going to say, foul. fastball way is doing him a favor. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Long's retired five straight. Braves got all three of their runs last inning. And the 2 2 is hit into the shift. Long throw. This time, Lestella didn't hesitate, played him deep. But Long has set down six in order. And we're off to the sixth inning. Three nothing Braves in the final game of this series. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you by Xfinity X5. Experience a powerful and secure Wi-Fi connection for all your devices. And by Synovus, the bank of here. The Coca-Cola Roxy Theater outside Truist Park in Atlanta here at the Battery. Braves enjoying a 3-0 lead before a big crowd. Ian Anderson making his first start in over a month for the Braves. Has looked very good. He shut out the hot hitting Giants on four hits. And now he starts his third trek through their lineup with La Stella rough and belt here in the top of the sixth inning. And only 70 pitches, so. Braves bullpen is busy. It's a left hander up. It is Tyler Matzik. Remember, I think what we saw. Oscar 75 76 pitches that first time back. He didn't allow any trouble here. I think Smith will let him go through this inning at 80, you know, 84 85 pitches, but that'll probably, which honestly is what you want. Give me six innings coming out after you've been out for six weeks. Lifted foul by La Stella. And Tommy's still alive. One ball, two strikes. And Waskar was a little different scenario in the fact that his was his hand, you know, whereas right. Ian was a shoulder. Right back to the mound. No need for a big jersey top to stop that ball or slow it down. Nice play by Ian Anderson. Lestella with three ground outs and that's 11 outs on the grass for Ian Anderson today. Those long arms able to extend it and make an easy play. Here's rough. He's the man that hit the ball that grazed Anderson's jersey. He almost Charlie Browned him. All right, glove went he flying. Did. And the uniform top slowed the ball down just enough to retire rough. It was a big play. It would have been a two out hit. The Giants would have scored first. Yeah, one of the few, one of the guys probably that's had the best ABs off Anderson today. Lined one in to left field the first AB, and then, like you said, grazed one off him that Ozzy was able to make the play and save a run. And notice where Ozzy's playing now. He's shifted to the first base yeah. side of the second base back now. 
Anderson had a first inning walk. But not much traffic since. And four straight puts rough aboard with one out. And here's that sequence we were talking about at the end of the third inning. This was close. Hey, it never touched his glove, hit his jersey. Just kind of stopped it. His glove came flying off. He said Ozzy was able to get over there, and make a play. At the time, keep the game 0 0. So a one out walk brings up Brandon Belt. He's walked and he has an infield hit. And down it in, one ball, no strikes. Get into that area where you get a little concerned. High pitch count, first game back, a lot of emotion, three run game, powerful part of the order coming up. Don't forget the weather too, being hot. Good point. So now vote out for a quick chat. Dansby will join that conversation as well. Two balls, no strikes for Brandon Belt. Before we get back to the 2 0 count to Brandon Belt, let's take a quick message from Landmark. Chip Carey at Landmark Morrow for out of the park deal. Shop Landmark's number one lineup at LandmarkDCJR.com. Two balls, no strikes. Will he triple up? Big swing and a miss there. This tells you how good Anderson's game has progressed. The Giants haven't seen much of him. And now the third time through the order, still not having much hitting luck, at least to this point. Two balls, two strikes. He did. And that's out of play. Foul, two balls, two strikes. Ian ready here comes his 2-2. Two -two. Good patience. Yeah, I was gonna say good good try. Just a little bit up. That ball's down a couple inches. He probably gets the call. Well Mantic's certainly getting ready for Crawford. At least you'd think so. Three balls, two strikes. One out walk in a three-nothing game. Rough at first. Not going. And the pitch is sky to center. No carry to that. Playable for Jock Peterson. And that is out number two. Yeah, that was a big pitch, too. Big sequence for Ian getting down 2 0, six straight balls. I usually see Rick Cranitz come out. If he let Belt get on base there, Chip, I don't even think Cranny comes out. I think Snit would have came out and brought Matzik in. So now. Ian, after getting that out, gets rewarded with a chance to get Crawford and get out of the sixth inning. Yeah, I'm not seeing Snit in his customary perch. It's hot today. So Ruff at first now, two outs. And Vote can't find it. And Ruff's going to take off, and he'll reach standing up at second. That's a lonely feeling, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody in the park knows where the ball is but you. There was a wild pitch. And it kind of scooted right behind Crawford, so I think it was tough to see at first. 
And now here comes Brian Snitker. 86 pitches for Ian Anderson. And with a runner at second here and some high stress for Ian. Snit wants an honest answer, it appears. And that's going to be the end of the line. So no visit from Rick Kranitz. It's Brian Snitker going to take the ball from Ian Anderson, who was terrific. Five and two thirds innings of two walk, four hit shutout baseball. He leads three nothing. It's Xfinity game break time. The other team chasing the Braves in the East is New York, the Mets. With the Mets down a run in the fourth inning, a runner aboard, Javi Baez, a two run homer. That's in the second deck off Eric Fetty, his 26th homer of the year. That put the Mets in front. That's where they stand. It is 4 3 New York. That's looking up at both the Phillies and the Braves in the East, and everybody looking up to Ian Anderson's terrific outing. For the Braves, his first since July 11th. Yeah, I thought he was magnificent. I, look, he had that long at bat against Belt. He threw a ball, spiked a changeup, and I just think at that point, Snit had realized, you know what, we got the lefty lefty matchup. You got to set up. Matson can get this. He can pitch a seventh, Luke Jackson for the eighth, and Will Smith for the ninth. So now it's just a matter of executing. Matson can hear it's a one ball, no strike count. Crawford is 0 for 2. Matzik has just been lights out. Lefties, righties, doesn't matter. They haven't done anything with him over, what, 17, 18 appearances? Yeah, when they do have someone scoring position like this with two outs, opponents are one for 23. That just missed a corner. Matzik hasn't allowed a run in 17 out of third innings. He's allowed just two inherited runners to score this year. Two of 18. That's terrific work. He's got Ruff aboard in a 3 nothing game. The pitch. Up and away. Three balls and a strike. There's so much power up and down this Giants lineup. You never feel comfortable facing him, even with a three run lead. So be careful with this pitch to Brandon Crawford. And it missed. It's a first batter walk, two on, two out. And now Flores, who, as we know, can hit a fastball, is coming up. Pulling that fastball. Ordinarily you think okay lefty righty advantage it goes to the batter. That's not necessarily the case with Tyler Matzik is it. Oh, righties are one for their last 54 against them. He's able to get that fastball in and to me that slider is really developing for him into that secondary pitch. A little late there wasn't he 96 and humming yep. strike one. Ian Anderson five and two thirds innings four hits two walks no strikeouts. Eleven ground ball outs made things easier for him today. Now Matzik trying to pick him up and end this San Francisco sixth. Driven to right curling foul into the seats it's 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes for Wilmer Flores. Here it is. Did he go? Yes, he did. Flores is out on a check swing. And Matzik works around a couple of walks. Nothing doing for the Giants. Ian Anderson and the Braves still enjoy a 3-0 lead. Did he go? Absolutely.
That's great, a great way to cool off on a hot day. And we'll try to cool off the Dodgers starting tomorrow night. Three game series at Dodger Stadium begins tomorrow at 930 Eastern with our Braves live coverage on Bally Sports South and the Bally Sports app. Braves baseball as always is presented by Truist. Chip and Jeff our Bally Sports crew with you from Atlanta. Three nothing Braves Austin Riley with a two run homer last time up. Talk about loud homers that was an yeah. explosion off the bat. Yeah sink her in and just drop the bat head on it. 305 now. 28 homers for Riley. Trying to become the fourth Braves third baseman to hit over 300 and get to 30 home runs. Eddie Matthews, Chipper Jones, and Bob Horner, the only others to do that. Think of those names in Braves annals. And he moved a step closer with this rocket in the fourth. Hey, every every swing right now, as you see, X velocity 109. Every swing has got a purpose. That's why there's no just flailing away. He's got an idea what he wants to do with it. Look, there's times he's going to strike out. He's going to ground into double plays. He's going to do that. But what I love is that just night in, night out, he's putting good ABs up against really good pitchers. Not just not just fours and fives. No, I mean he's hitting the good ones. Yeah. And coming up in big spots with hits. For the Braves. 362 average since the All-Star break. Counting the home run in the fourth inning. Eight hits in his last 13 at bats. He is doing what you hope your cleanup hitter will do, and that is clean up. Yep. Pop fly over the Braves dugout foul. High fly to right. But he just missed it. Wade's going to have room. And Long is on a nice roll. He's given the Giants bats a chance to catch up. He's retired seven straight. In fact, the Giants bullpen's been on a nice roll. They've retired 13 straight hitters in this series. And you can see why they like Long. He's got three pretty plus pitches. One more note on Austin Riley. I've used the comp of Troy Gloss with him a lot. May of 2010 that's 11 years ago but in May of 2010 you remember Gloss had that unbelievable role 28 RBIs in 28 games in May of 2010 Riley's on kind of similar production Troy hit 330 that month yeah So one away seven up seven down for Sammy Long. Here's Jock Peterson. He legged down an infield hit his first time. Good take from Jock Peterson. Three hits against the Giants this year, two of them homers. And he takes ball four. That's the first blemish for Sammy Long. A one out walk in the Atlanta sixth. And that'll bring up Dansby Swanson. He's one for two. Let's check out his player resume brought to you by Indeed. 
talk about this whole Braves infield. Dansby just continues the hot work at shortstop not only playing great defense but you can see offensively 19 RBIs in the last 21 games and that's kind of why he's just fell in that little five spot I know he's hitting six today with Jock but it's been a great run producing spot for him not just run producing but run prevention too. think about how well he has played at shortstop oh, yeah. So another shortstop that's gone through a streak of 72 games with only two errors and for a guy that plays almost every inning of every game. Can't think of one off the top of my head. So clearly at least for me this is the best stretch of Dansby Swanson's big league career in 2021 for the Braves. Big hole right side for him. He's ahead in the count, two and zero. Oh. And now three balls, no strikes. All of a sudden, he's just lost complete control of the strike zone. Seven straight balls. He'd only thrown nine to twenty-seven strikes. Anderson and Di Sclafani started. Both are long gone. Di Sclafani gave up all three runs. Anderson looked terrific. The pitch is taken inside. Back to back walks. Nobody up in the Giants' pen. Another visit from the Giants' pitching coach here in the Atlanta sixth inning. So while the Giants talk over strategy down three nothing we'll enjoy another quick message from Children's Health Care of Atlanta. You wouldn't put your teen on the same field as the pros. So why would you take them to the same doctor? Fight. Now the Giants chip are kind of in that position right now where three nothing game it's very manageable but. You get a couple more runs. Look, the Giants go back home, as you say, get the Brewers for four and the Dodgers for three. So, I mean, they, they need that pen ready, too, when you get home. So that's where the Braves can push a couple across right here. Might be able to kind of ice this thing away, to be honest with you. Rosario has singled, stolen a base, and lined out. Well, I guess that's a fair question to ask. We've seen the Dodgers already. They're a very different looking team than the one that lost two out of three games to the Braves here at adding Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. We'll get our taste of that tomorrow night. But having seen the Giants in this series and having seen the Dodgers and knowing what Trey Turner does to the Braves and what Max Scherzer has meant to their rotation. As Rosario awaits and skies it foul. Are the Giants going to hang on? Are they going to win the West? Because if they don't, that's a huge swing from being the team with the best record to win the division and the alternative being a wild card. Well, I think both those teams are so good. It's not going to be decided till the last week of the season. I think both those teams have what it takes to, you know, make it to that last week. 1 1 pitch. Hammered into the right field corner. That's going to score one for sure. Dansby around second on his way to third. Wash is going to wave it. He's going to score. They miss the cutoff man, and Rosario slides in with a two run triple. I think they might take a look at this with the ball getting stuck down underneath the thing. Sometimes though I, I think it's the player has to call for time first. Maybe I'm wrong. Good piece of hit and got to hang a curveball. Yeah Gabe Kapler is going to come out and check and see, see if the ball right there, the, stuck under the padding. But I thought sometimes 
and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know the rules like you do. If, does the player not have to put his hands up? Well, I know in the Ivy at Wrigley Field you do. That's that's my point. If I remember right, I was always told there, if you ever worried, put your hand up. But well, apparently not if they're checking. The difference here was it would be a, a double. You'd have second and third. And one RBI, not two. Wade had a long way to go. I guess the other part of it is in the umpire's discretion, would they have stopped him even if he had not had to pull the ball out from under the padding? I don't think they would have. Yeah. But for the Giants, look, cut off whatever damage you can. As Mark Carlson and Jordan Baker await the verdict from New York. Now, you know the Braves at least are taking a four run lead. And worst case, going to have second and third. So, yeah, there's no penalty for Rosario. Wade went to get it, dug it out, and because he didn't throw his hands up, that's on him. Yeah. Yeah, he said overthrew the cutoff, man. It cost him possibly throwing Rosario out at third. So the infield comes in for Steven Vogt. It's a triple and two RBIs, five nothing Braves. And Steven Vogt is the batter, takes a breaking ball for a strike. Gave Rosario triple on that. Big hit right there. Vote hammers one into the seats. And now they're kind of in the same place the Braves were last night. Where it's five nothing. Right. You saw them bring in Jesse Chavez last night. You know, early on last night, you saw Richard Rodriguez come in when it was only a three run game. So now five nothing. And Vote didn't get that. He swings and misses. He's got the hat trick. And now Adam Duvall will come on and pinch hit with a runner at third. And now two outs. Second strikeout for Long. So nice work by Matzik. He should be fresh and ready to go tomorrow night. He faced two hitters, walked one, struck out one. Well, that's what you kind of hope that your offense can blow the game open and give yourself a fresh bullpen headed out to L.A. And not just L.A., the four games well, have followed. Absolutely. Seven games. That's, he said you end up using quite a few pitchers in Colorado. Infield backs up with two outs. Here's a stat for you from Dr. No. Adam Duvall has the most two out RBI in the major leagues. He's tied with 41 with the Angels Shohei Otani. Very impressive. That? Yeah. This one popped out of play right side. One ball one strike. One one pitch for Duvall out of play. I'm checking the truest park ground rules as listed on MLB.com. There is no scenario listed for a ball going underneath the padding in that below the chop area and there is no universal ground rule listed for that either. So I think you had it right. It's up to the fielder to put his arms up and then all time and then usually they'll grant that correct. But when you go to make the play, they just assume, all right, if you can get it, game on. Popped back our way. It's like uh, 
in the old ballpark in San Diego, Jack Murphy Stadium. Yep. He hit a ball into the bullpens, which were down the lines. That was live. The ball could ricochet around the ball bag, chairs. Yep. The sticky stuff that was in use back then. And sometimes there'd be three or four baseballs laying down there. You'd have to go pick the right one up. <laughs> Plus they missed the cutoff man which helped the Braves cause too. good battle here for Duvall one ball two strikes. Very deliberately paced game in Atlanta getaway day for both clubs it's a race to the airport Braves head to. L.A. The Giants head back home for the Brewers. In the end of a nine-game road trip for the Giants, although three were against Oakland. Broken bat pop and Listella behind second will take care of Duvall, but not before Rosario in his first Brave start. His second hit a two-run triple, and the Braves cash in a couple of walks. Game summary long balls early for the Braves then taking advantage of some walks from Sammy Long and the pitching story Ian Anderson Jeff in his return looked very very sharp. Yeah you got to love what he was able to do today five and two thirds. I thought it was great how he hung in there at the end got Brandon Belt came back on him. And then the offense. Talked how good they've become attacking on run just tacked on two more there and now. Richard Rodriguez will come on pitch an inning yesterday gave up a solo shot to this man right here in the box. Mike Yastrzemski is your hitter. Yastrzemski had a homer and a double two runs knocked in for San Fran. One of the most often asked questions of us years ago with the Braves when we'd come to town and see a team for the first time is how do you guys spell or say Fulton Evich? Yeah. I'll bet the same thing is true for the Giants. Can you spell Yastrzemski? I was going to say, I would think that was just spell, not pronounced for him. Yeah. Because it's easy. Yes. That's my point. Right. Knowing who his granddad is, you think they'd have an idea. Well, the old PA voice of the Red Sox was a man named Sherm Feller. That's out of play and he was the man responsible for introducing the players before their at bats in Boston and one day Sherm Feller who is a famous songwriter wrote the song Summertime Summertime one of his musical works couldn't get Yastrzemski out at home so he's talking talk and now batting it. Yaz. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just, he just said, I'm out. I'm going with Yaz. He couldn't get Yastrzemski out. What a wonderful man. Sherm Feller at Fenway Park. Pop fly foul. And Yastrzemski staying alive. One ball, two strikes. Good for this kid. He was originally drafted by the Red Sox. You imagine the pressure that would have yeah. been for him. Said he ends up at Vanderbilt, and now he's having breakthrough career with the San Francisco Giants. Good for him. One-two pitch, and low and away from Rodriguez. Two balls, two strikes. In the air to center. And Jock Peterson has plenty of room. That takes care of Yastrzemski. One out. We invite you to stick around for the stretch presented by Sinovas. Kelly Kroll, Peter Moylan, Brian Jordan are standing by out on the battery stage. 
to talk about this game perhaps preview what's coming up next for the Braves out in Los Angeles with the Dodgers. And sure enough. You know, I thought Long was about to come out on deck. They got Dickerson. I think Long still in the dugout there. Fly ball another chance for Peterson in center. Casale is retired. And that's the second out. This is one of those that he's going to pitch. You're going to keep going and try to give me two more innings where you don't burn anybody else. He's the hero of the day for the Giants no matter the outcome if he can do that. One more note I'm sure Kelly Peter and Brian are going to talk about what Ian Anderson did today. How important will that be for the Braves knowing what's ahead on the road trip. His next start figures to be in Denver against the hot hitting Rockies at Coors Field. That's what you like you keep getting really good starts from a majority of these guys. Six innings two runs you know six innings one run. Ground ball to second Rodriguez a one two three seventh inning here in Atlanta the Braves enjoying a five nothing advantage. Welcome into the stretch presented by Synovus. The Braves flipping the script a little bit here today, gentlemen, up 5 0 as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Uh, big home run by Solaire, also Austin Riley, but the I guess headline of the afternoon had to be the return of Ian Anderson five and two thirds scoreless innings Peter what's your biggest takeaway from this one. Uh, he was really impressive. I didn't know what we were going to get from him today but we got more than I thought we were going to get great great outing by him today. Uh, impressive was the best thing 58 pitches through four innings eight ground ball outs he got in a bit of trouble with the leadoff guys letting a few guys get on base but he found himself I was really really impressed with when Snit took him out honestly that's a move that you don't normally see in this day and age but kudos to him but Ian Anderson back huge news. No it's like picking up a guy in the trade right now you know it's late in the season Ian is back he looked terrific he kept the ball down in the zone really well getting ground balls. And that's a positive sign for the Braves that he was able to go five and two thirds in his first start and the Braves hopefully will continue to win this ball game and he'll get a victory five and two thirds and it's only four hits. I'm a little surprised no strikeouts which I normally don't see out of starting pitchers but you don't have to strike guys out to get them out. This is proven. Not too many walks though either BJ. That's right. Two walks. So there's that. Yeah. That's <laughs> two walks. Not too Certainly bad. Certainly something to build on and that's what right. the Braves are looking for this afternoon. And speaking of the Braves we'll get you right back to the game here after a quick word from our friends at Synovus. We're all motivated by something. A place to go. An idea to pursue. A legacy to leave. Whatever inspires you. We'll help you live it. Synovus Inspire. Inspiring performance from Ian Anderson today. He and the Braves bullpen have shut down the San Francisco Giants, the homer hitting San Francisco Giants, and are trying to return the favor of a 5 0 shutout that the Giants put on the Braves in game two last night. Braves look to add on here in the seventh. Ozzie Albies, Jorge Soler, and Freddie Freeman are coming up. And Jeff this is one of those times where when your offense is clip clicking it seems like that trio's up every inning. It does and that's exactly what you want to keep the pressure on the Giants and on long. I'll tell you something though real quick Timothy Miller just kills it every time he does the God bless America. He's amazing isn't he? Love it. And in light of the tragic events overseas this week his wonderful singing even more poignant today. As Ozzie Albies with a rifle shot double to left on the second pitch. That extends his batting streak to five games in a row with a hit. Seven for 21. Yeah, you didn't think he was going to have two at bats against the lefty today. <laughs> Not get a hit. Gets a fastball in. The other night we saw him face Watson and shoot the gap in left center. This time drives it right by Darren Ruff in left field. Well Jorge Soler a long home run highlights his day. He's got 20 home runs for the season between Kansas City and Atlanta. Seven homers 15 RBIs in 25 games with the Braves. 
I don't know how the executive of the year voting takes place. I don't know what the parameters are for that. But can you think of a deal that is bo a group of deals, I should say, that have been more impactful than the ones Alex Anthopoulos made for the Braves? Yeah, not at the deadline. I'll tell you that. So, so the way the Giants have played, I got to believe Gabe Kapler is going to end up getting manager of the year, I would think. And look, every team in contention can make an argument for their skipper. Yep. And look, Gabe Kapler's grown up a lot in that manager's chair in San Francisco after some struggles with the Phillies. This one popped down the line. Long run Flores slowing near the top. Can't get there. And Soler gets another chance. A ball and two strikes. But I, I say this about Alex, and I use the old term that Clint Hurdle had when he was with the Colorado Rockies that it takes courage to have patience. I'm sure it was very tempting at some point when all the Braves kept going down with injuries. It was one man down after another. He could have emptied the farm system perhaps and overpaid in May or June. Kept his powder dry and waited until the deadline when it was clear the team needed help and they were still very competitive. That nine game trip. This one's cued off the pitcher's foot. Crawford, bad hop throws to first, not in time, and all the bounces are going the Braves' way today. First and third with nobody out. Yeah, I was just about to say that nine game trip to Philly and New York, yeah. where they went five and four, if they would have dropped to three and six, might have been a whole different story. You said here, all the bounces. Ball couldn't get to Crawford quick enough. Now you got first and third. Second With hit for Freeman Soler. and Riley. Trying to blow open a 5 0 game. But again, to the point about Alex, and the same thing with Gabe Kapler. Look, you learn in this business, right? You're, you're not going to have a perfect run. Every manager is going to have a bad year or two. GMs make bad trades, all that stuff. It happens. It's part of the body of work. First, the pitch to Freddie. But Alex has been very candid, too, Jeff, about. The lesson he learned in Toronto you can make trades and try to improve your ball club but if the guys aren't necessarily right fits for the culture you have or are trying to create it doesn't matter who you get it's not going to work. I know they, he does his homework. It's called former players. I'm asking about certain guys the makeup. Because that's important too. Like you said the last thing you want is someone coming in and causing turmoil in a locker room. After teams been together for four months and then another month and a half in spring training. And so that trip to New York and Philadelphia, I think, was the convincing moment that the Braves were still a contending team. As there's a shot to center, Freddie Freeman has a hit in an RBI. Albies will score, and the Braves have made it 6 0. And still nobody up in the Giants' pen. It's been a long day for the long man in relief for the Giants today. Well, they came on and did a pretty good job. For about two two innings or so and now Braves are starting to time them up. Seen them a couple times. 66 pitches for long after he came in with nobody out in the fourth inning after D, after D. Sclafani had to depart. And that's low. One more note. I agree with you with what the Giants have done. Maybe the biggest surprise in baseball. Gabe Kapler's got to be the odds on favorite in the National League. But credit Brian Snicker. Think about where this team was mid June seven and a half out team that came within one game of going to the World Series. As this one is queued up the middle. The flip to Crawford steps on the bag and not in time. That was nicely done up the middle. They force Freddie Freeman. Riley is safely aboard. First and third for Atlanta. One in, one out. Yeah, it was perfectly placed cue ball. And Crawford really couldn't get anything on this throw. Good hustle by Austin. Give the guy behind you a chance for a sack fly, something to tack on another run. Which would make it 7 nothing. 
Braves had one hit with a runner in scoring position last night. They have five of them today and lead six nothing. But the final thought on Brian Snitker that I'd like to make is for a team that's won the East three straight years perhaps unexpectedly so in 2018 repeated in 19 made it through covid last year. This year with all the injuries. All the struggles offensively pitching bullpen and the like. As there will be that sacrifice fly who wants it it's going to be rough and left. Solaire will tag and score his second run. Jock Peterson with RBI number 55 and seven zip. I truly believe Jeff this might be Brian Sitker's finest hour. Yeah, well, and the expectations this team had coming into this year. This was the first year that they've been picked to win the division, go to the World Series, do that whole thing, and things just didn't get off to a great start. But Snit, the rest of the coaching staff, players kind of bought in. We got to keep biding time, waiting to hit right. And now you're doing it and you're beating the team with the best record in baseball seven nothing here to take two out of three and in great fashion long ball getting guys over sack fly right there what ways you win in the playoffs got to be able to do that manufacture a run so today for Atlanta game number one hundred twenty nine thirty three left. 33 games left and really 32 kind of dates because one of those games is going to be only th what two and a half innings in Correct. San Diego. Yep got the conclusion of the suspended game to be made up September 24th I think that is. Yeah so you tell yourself look Philly saying on you finish Tuesday night and all they can game is a half a game on you when they play the Diamondbacks for four and you play the Giants for three you'll take that any day of the week. And it's fun to play the math game. It's dangerous in a way because you can lull yourself into a false sense of security. But just look, do the math. If the Braves play 500 the rest of the way, they win 86, 87 games, right? 86. Yep. For the Phillies to get to 87 wins, they have to win 22. I don't know if the Phillies can do that. Yep. It's certainly possible. Yeah, I don't think they've played at that kind of pace all year and with a month to play that's an awfully tall order to ask. And that's why we said these 10 games I thought were really important. Three with the Giants three with the Dodgers four at the Rockies because you know you, you find a way to go five and five to me even in those 10 games you come home and then you get the Marlins Nats and Rockies on the road. And you figure OK now's our time to win two out of three win two out of three you do that. You force them to have to sweep. So just keep playing good ball like they're doing and they'll be just fine. Braves had a good seventh inning. They tack on two more three consecutive hits and a sack fly makes it seven nothing. Braves baseball on Valley Sports is brought to you by Truist. Everything coming up roses for Atlanta on Sunday in game three of the series. Brave seven Giants nothing after seven complete a couple of changes for Atlanta Guillermo Heredia will check into play center. Jock Peterson will shift from center to right and the new pitcher is A.J. Minter the third reliever to follow Ian Anderson Minter will have the top of the San Francisco order. A.J. pitched a clean inning Friday night in seventh. Got out of there at least by clean I mean with no runs gave up a hit and a walk. That was his first walk since coming back. No balls and a strike for Lamont Wade. And right there strike two. Now look at Riley sprinting from the rover position. <laughs> How far do you think that is. 40 40 yards 45 50 45 40 30 no. make up your mind which is it <laughs> no balls two strikes and that is fair down the right field line on an 0 2 pitch that ball dies up against the padding Peterson will pick that up 
And Lamont Wade has a leadoff double to go with a bunt single. So a two hit game for him. Didn't necessarily hit hard, got off the end of the bat, but pulled it right down the line. Good piece of hitting. So too good a pitch with two strikes. Wade didn't miss it. Let's see what Lestella can do. Lestella has grounded out three times. Good crowd today, 28,820 officially. Braves are knocking at the door of 1.9 million in attendance. Hear him knocking. Braves second to the Dodgers in big league attendance this year. Home games remaining for the Braves. Hope you'll make your plans to join us. The Nationals and Marlins followed by the Rockies. It is September 7th through the 16th then the final six games of regular season play the Phillies and Mets. Get your tickets at Braves.com. Los Bravos night coming up. A few bobblehead days remain I believe. More importantly the Braves are in first place might see him clinch a fourth straight Eastern Division title in the weeks ahead. Not quite to September yet it's August 29th. But boy it's nice to be talking about that possibility considering how far back Atlanta was in mid June. One two pitch from Minter. That was a good try. No appeal. Two and two. Phillies lead Arizona 5 2. Diamondbacks have the bases loaded in the eighth, but two outs. That's 7 3 over the Nationals. That one late. Strike three. Throws him on the inside corner. Lestella 0 for 4. Minter gets his first out. Yeah, good pitch. You could see Lestella looking for something hard or something off the plate. And he throws him that front door slider, freezes him. Darren Ruff, the former Philly, singled, walked, and had a hit and RBI taken away by Ian Anderson's jersey top. That was in the third inning. Nick Ahmed, the former Brave, just had a base hit. Arizona's now down five to four. That game's in the eighth inning. Go Diamondbacks. They're trying to play the role of the spoiler, aren't they? Yeah, for sure. Broke the Phillies' hearts out west. Took three out of four against the Padres. 1 0 pitch. If you want to look at a reason why the division race stands where it is Jeff look at how the Braves have done against the lesser teams in the major leagues compare that to the with the Phillies. Yeah you're right that's make up five six games right there. Braves at the moment are four and a half games in front of Philadelphia. 2 0 pitch to rough. Beltan Crawford to left handed bats are waiting for San Francisco. Double strikeout walk. Two on, one out, and Brandon Belt is coming up on a beautiful Hyundai Sunday in Atlanta, Georgia. Hyundai, it's your journey. Own it. Braves hope to drive home with a 
series win over San Francisco. Luke Jackson is getting up. Yeah, he really would. He's just starting to toss lightly, but the last thing you want to do is have to get him hot right here in this situation. You got two lefties. Granted, they're good hitting lefties, but the matchups you want. So many amazing things about a big league game. Where's the pitch to belt? At the top of that list for me, Jeff, is how a Sunday game can affect Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday's game, yeah. especially with your bullpen. High pitch counts, long innings might make a guy like Minter unavailable tomorrow. And if, as you said, you have to get somebody else hot, that may make him unavailable too. So for Minter with his 7-0 lead, a double on a two-strike pitch, and then the walk to rough, not what Rick Kranitz or Brian Snitker had in mind. One ball, one strike. Lifted softly toward left. Riley got a good jump. And a good job by Minter to get to the third base bag and cover just in case. It was not ruled an infield fly. Riley had to make the play, and he did, and that's the second out. Something else to keep an eye on, Jeff, when the Braves head west, September 1st, rosters will expand. And by expand, I mean ever so slightly. We yeah. have new rules in place for that. Instead of being able to add up to 40 guys to your big league roster, you can only add two more, maximum of 28. So we'll see how the Braves play that. Here's Crawford, 0 for 2 with a walk. Diamondback still batting in the eighth inning. Hector Neres has come on. Cattell Marte is up with two on and two out. Phillies clinging to a one run lead. Here it's 7 0 Atlanta. Now AJ's a strike away. Two on, two out, one ball, two strikes. San Francisco, eighth inning. And a swing and a miss. Crawford is down on strikes. Couple of strikeouts for A.J. Minter and a scoreless eighth inning. Atlanta in front, in command, up 7-0. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Your local Ford dealer. And by the Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. 7 up the Braves have out hit the Giants 10 5 couple of big homers early in the game gave Atlanta all they've needed to this point. So an A plus effort for the Braves trying to take two out of three. From the Giants. A list premium members experience the absolute best, the truest park in the Battery Atlanta have to offer. You and your guests will never want to leave your seats with in seat food and beverage service and a great view and padded seats behind home plate. Join the priority list for 2022 A list premium membership at Braves.com slash premium. One extra benefit you never know, you might get to hobnob with big time stars like Mark DeRosa and Brian McCann. Exactly. Who were here last night. 
thought we were supposed to be trying to sell this. First pitch to Rosario. <laughs> that was Jeff, by the way, Brian. I'm sure he knows. One pitch, one out in the eighth inning. Nice day for Rosario in his brave starting debut. A triple, two RBIs, and two hits. Yeah, a lot of pop. So good speed. Good day for him. And no matter what happens for the Giants, every single member of their traveling party should walk up to Sammy Long and shake his hand. Well, you know, Sammy, you talk about having a long day. You're preparing as if you're starting today because they basically went down to the pen with Scalfani, not knowing how his ankle would feel. So my guess is, you know, he was probably went through his whole routine. Then, you know, in the fourth inning, he's got to get hot and come on in a game. Now he's going to try to cover five innings for the Giants. Another shot to left. This one off the bat of votes, but playable for Ruff. Quickly two out. And then we'll look ahead to the San Francisco night. Flores, Yastrzemski, and Casali are the scheduled hitters. And then we will look forward to seeing San Francisco beginning September 17th for Atlanta's lone trip to Oracle Park. Look, as disappointing as the Yankees series was, and the Yankees lost, or the Braves, I should say, lost not just the Yankees, but instant replay. <laughs> this was a, a, a nice rebound yeah. for Atlanta. Yeah, look, you're playing two really good baseball teams, two and three homestand. Doesn't necessarily kill you. Like you said, could have very easily been three and two had you got a call or two. That's honestly what you wanted to measure your team up against some of the best. And you're going to get this hopefully for two out of three, and then you're going to get a chance to go on the road and put your winning streak on the line against three really good pitchers. Downstairs for Heredia, who figures to see some action tomorrow night. At least on paper, you've got Urias, the left-hander, going for LA in Game One against Drew Smiley, Charlie Morton, Walker Bueller in Game Two, and then Max Fried versus Max Scherzer in the series wrap-up on Wednesday. We will have all three of those games for you on Valley Sports. Coverage starts at 9:30 Eastern Time. We will be caffeinated and ready to go. So stay up late with us for the first of two West Coast trips for the Braves in 2021. Line toward left. Heredia with a base hit. Let's see if he can turn that into two. Of course he can. Heredia, Mr. Doubles for the Braves. And he's aboard with two outs, and that'll give Ozzy another chance to swing the bat. Wow. Yeah, double out of the box. That's a good thing. Being able to bring him in for defense replacement like that, you keep him fresh from an offensive standpoint, let him get an ABs. Guillermo had been in an offensive funk of late. He's picked up a couple of knocks, so good to see his bat coming to life when the Braves need it. Here's Ozzie, a double, a run in the Atlanta two run seventh. So the Braves will go to 18 and 6 with Ozzie Albies out of the leadoff spot. Braves started play today with 69 wins. This will be number 70. They will head west over 500 at home. And with three more outs, they'll have won seven series this month. That's now you get into first place and stay there. It sounds so elementary for the casual fan. Look, you're happy with going two and one in every series? Well, you add that up over 162 games. Yeah. You win 108 if you do that all year.
And even more importantly for the Braves, they extend their or will keep their lead and shave another day off the calendar. No balls, two strikes, runner at second, two outs. Seven runs on 11 hits for the Braves today. Phillies batting in the bottom of the eighth inning, lead 5 4 over the Diamondbacks. Be a happy flight for Brian Snitker and Freddie Freeman. Who will get their first look at the L.A. Dodgers in a long time. Dodgers were here June 4th, 5th, and 6th. And that got away. That's going to bounce back to the warning track. Tell you this, on a hot day, the Giants have been in the field all day long. Yeah. Not the way you want to end a long road trip, right? I was going to say, I have a feeling some of those guys are going to be sleep pretty quick on the plane. Probably both teams. When you go on West Coast like that after this hot game. Get three extra hours to get caught up. Braves lost 9-5, then won 6-4 and 4-2 over the Dodgers in that early June series. That one got away. Here is going to try to score on the ricochet. Casale didn't get there in time. And let's see if Casale's all right. He may have banged up the left wrist trying to apply the tag, and Heredia is going to score. That'll be the eighth Atlanta run. Let's see if the Giants challenge this play at the plate. They might want to check and see if their catcher's okay. Gabe Kapler says yes. I want to. I want to check it. I actually think he might be out. Well, you never know. No, you don't. But looking at this angle, watch his foot. I don't know if it ever gets on the plate or not. Well, again, the original call is the one that carries the most weight. So then they go to New York and wait and see if there's enough evidence to change the call, which was safe. I, I liked what Charlie Morton said after that call that went against the Braves with Freddie Freeman. He thought a way to improve replay is not let the umpire in New York know what the call is and yeah. make that the definitive call. 100%. Well, now you look at it a couple more times at the angle. Maybe his foot is on the plate, but the dirt kind of kicks up, so you can't really see. So, as we said, who knows? I think that's the better answer. And that's the, the problem I have with replay. I said it the other night, and I stand by it inconclusive and we don't know at this point for any call of this magnitude shouldn't be acceptable. There's got to be a better way to do it than we're doing it and as long as we're doing it. Here's a look at the play at the plate and Heredia is ruled safe. So quite a collision between Heredia and Casale. So back to back wild pitches. Brings home Guillermo and the Braves had a run to make it eight to nothing. It's been a rough road trip for Casale. Yes. Conked in the head and now has to deal with a wrist. And the Giants need one more out to send this game to the ninth. Eight runs on 11 hits for the Braves today. And out of play foul, still two balls, two strikes. Tuki Toussaint is up in the Braves' bullpen. He's got bullpen experience in his Braves' career. Oh, yeah, get him an inning, keep him sharp, and look, in Colorado, there's no doubt. High, towering fly ball to left. Rough on the run. Glass is gleaming. Not going to get it. Home run number 23 for Albies. That makes it a 9 nothing game. Tell you what, Ron Washington.
Washington's been a busy man today. Just the way we like it. And as the Braves celebrate the Albies home run. He gets a hanging curveball from Long after spiking two in a row. And I think Kapler's not going to let him go anymore. I think we're about to see a position player. I think he's asked Long to do a lot. Long day, and I think finally he's got to appreciate the work that he's done for him. 90 pitches, yeah, like you said, kind of take one on the chin. Yeah, he gave up six runs, but saved the bullpen for that big series with Milwaukee. And so Gabe Kapler will apparently use a position player to pitch. Sammy Long will sleep well tonight on his way back to San Francisco as Atlanta enjoys a nine to nothing lead. So it's Austin Slater who's going to come on and pitch for San Francisco. He'll get a moment or two to warm up here. And I was about to say with Ron Washington, Jeff, Ron, you know, is playing today with a heavy heart. We'll explain more on that when we return to Atlanta after this. Sorry. First pitching appearance for Austin Slater. He'll face Ed Adrianza, who will pinch hit for A.J. Minter. Nine nothing. Atlanta has the lead. And again, Ron Washington from New Orleans. For all of our friends in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast, our thoughts and prayers are with you today as Hurricane made landfall today. Texted with Wash before the game and wished him all the best. He was able to get his family to Atlanta. And hopefully you and yours watching were able to do the same and that Mother Nature will be kind during these trying times today. Yeah, 16 years to the day of Katrina. So Ed Adrianza a chance to pinch hit. And he takes ball four, so Slater is trying to get it over the plate. Now has to stare down Freddie Freeman. Well, if there's one thing you could say Freddie's had a bad season with, it's facing position play <laughs> <Good> points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure at, your, at some point in your career you faced a fellow position oh, player. Oh, absolutely. I, I tell you, it's not fun. There you go. First pitch <laughs> popped up. And rough in left is there, and we head to the ninth inning. It's all Braves. Nine nothing is your score. One of the joys of coming to a big league game, you might get a souvenir. There's one of them. How about that catch? And that young fan came up with one in the scrum. I was going to say, that's Future. like coming out of the bottom of the pile with a fumble. Future rugby star. Yeah. And it's our T Mobile coverage cam on a hot day in Atlanta. So, Tuki Toussaint is going to come out of the bullpen for the Braves and hopefully have a clean inning. It'll be interesting to see how the Braves stack up their rotation against the Rockies. You know. The havoc that place can wreak on a visiting team's pitching staff. You know how good Colorado is in that ballpark. And like the Giants did today with Di Sclafani and Long, maybe you see a piggyback situation if needed for Atlanta. As Riley at third gets the Braves and out closer to a series win. One out. Well, yeah, I mean, look, you got to have some length when you go into a place like. Colorado and the tough thing you're going into Colorado after being in L.A. for three games. So I think that's what's even important is having good starts by Smiley Morton and Freed. So you feel like you have a fresh bullpen. You know going forward because you go you come home you get Labor Day off. So you know you feel you can kind of really let it eat those last four games in Colorado. But if you got a fresh pen you feel good about it. Well, the teams with the best records at home in the National League West. Colorado and the Dodgers identical 43 and 22 records entering today's play. So truly a difficult road trip for Atlanta as Yastrzemski swings the first one pops it into center. That's the second out. And the Braves one out away from winning a home series against the top two teams in the National League West the Dodgers and the Giants.
Here's Kirk Casale. And Tukey misses down low. Phillies lead 7 4. They are an out away from beating Arizona today. But they can't gain any ground on the Braves. They'll lead 9 0. Colorado's jumped in front of the Dodgers 3 0. That game's in the second. Miami beat the Reds. And it's clobbering the Nationals. And the Cardinals, if they don't make the playoffs, they will rue a series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. They haven't been able to beat Pittsburgh. Lost again to them today, 4 to 3. Tukey throw it right down the middle and see how far he can hit it. You lead 9 0. Three balls and a strike. But he lost him. Two out walk. Keeps the game alive for the Giants. And Austin Slater was a little disappointed, Jeff. Faced two big league hitters, walked one, got a pop out, and the umps didn't check him when he went off the field. Yeah, the, uh, he could have been cheating. <laughs> <laughs> it really does crack me up, though, going back to it. Fred, Freddie cannot get a hit off a position player. I mean, it's it's amazing. Guy can square up Jacob DeGrom with the best of them. That's where Yogi was right, right? Yep. 90% of the game is half mental. As Toussaint delivers a strike. But it is a nightmare for a position player, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Those, those I mean, there, there's no win. You get a base hit. Well, great. You're supposed to. Ah, uh, yep. I always felt like just don't strike out. That was to me. That was the hmm. don't strike out. Don't <laughs> don't blow your bat up. Don't get jammed. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Who gave you the most trouble among position players? Was there one in particular that Felipe Lopez in St. Louis? He was tough. Really? On the ground. Tricky Whoa. hop. Dansby stayed with it. And how about your Braves? They take two out of three from the Giants. And they return the shutout favor. Last night, San Francisco picked up their 15th. Today, the Braves earned their 15th shutout. The Brewers and Giants and Braves all bunched up, tied for first in that regard, Jeff. All three of those teams perhaps headed for the playoffs. That's no surprise with that kind of great pitching. Yeah, you got to love after last night, kind of nothing really going offensively, although you gave yourself chances. I said they got to find a way to forget about that game and come out today. Well, they showed up a business like attitude today and sent the Giants on their way, taking two out of three against, as I've said, the best record in baseball. Debatable if you think they're the best team, but right now they got the best record in baseball and the Braves did their job. What did Ric Flair say? He said a lot of things. Well, but most importantly, besides Wu, it was to be the best, you got to beat the best. Yeah, I was going to say, he's, yeah, he's, you know, we can go a long way with Ric Flair. <laughs> yeah, but what, what a, like I said, those guys should get on the plane, feel good about themselves. Now you get to go out and you get to continue playing the Dodgers, the other best team. Yeah, and well, then Colorado, yeah. and then you come home with Washington, the Marlins, and the Rockies, and then the last Western trip of Biggie, San Diego, Arizona, and San Francisco. Yeah, and you think the, they took, what, three out of four Phillies did? And at the end of the day, the Braves took two out of three and lost half a game. You'll take that any time. So Atlanta wins it 9 0. They out hit the Giants 12 5. Ian Anderson picks up the win. He's now 6 and 5 on the season. Anthony DiSclafani falls to 11 and 6. No save in the game. 28,820 were on hand today in a three hour and 15 minute extravaganza for the Atlanta Braves. Ozzie Albies had a couple of hits. Jorge Soler had a couple of hits. Freddie Freeman a couple of knocks. Austin Riley a big two-run homer. And Jeff, the Braves did it just about every way they could. Long balls, manufactured offense, played a great game defensively, and of course, uh, excellent pitching too. Yeah, they were great. I mean, they, they played a complete game today. So Franco Garcia is down on the field. He is the Braves' 
Spanish language coordinator for us. We're waiting on Eddie Rosario, who is with us. So, Eddie, congratulations. Welcome to Atlanta. What's it feel like to be a member of the first place Atlanta Braves? Thank you, thank you. I uh, feel happy. Uh, play again in the Major League. And the, the game, I love it. Uh, so happy to play my first game here in Atlanta. Eddie, you had two years ago, 32 homers, 109 RBIs. You've had some huge years. It, it's got to be great for you to be able to come over to a pennant race and know you're going to be able to contribute and, and not only that but put up numbers to help this team win. Bueno, Eddie, obviamente llegar, llegar a este equipo debe sentir bien este llegar un, un equipo ganador y poder contribuir este aquí este en la en la lucha para llegar a los playoffs y a la postemporada. Sí, este cada vez que yo estoy jugando un equipo que estamos ganando, este las cosas me salen mejor. Creo que ese es mi juego, ayudar al equipo a ganar. Eso es lo que yo siempre estoy pensando, como sea, moviendo los corredores, trayendo las carreras empujadas. Y eso es lo que yo vengo aquí a demostrar y tratar de ayudar al equipo a ganar. Yeah, honestly, I think any time that I'm on a winning team, I feel like I play better myself. So I feel like that's my that's my role on this team right now. It's just to do whatever I can to help the team win, and whether that's moving runners over or driving runs in. You know, that's sort of my entire focus is just doing whatever I can to help the team win. Well, Eddie, I know it's been a long day for you and a longer day to come with that flight to Los Angeles. Thank you for joining us. Congratulations. Welcome to the Braves and uh, have a fantastic road trip. We'll see you guys when you get back. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. And you know what else he did, Jeff? He almost made uh, Wally Pip out of. Uh, yeah, Franco. Franco. We don't Garcia. need Franco anymore. Sorry, Franco. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> he made air. Franco yeah. Garcia and his fantastic hair. He is the best in the best business. Hair. Braves win it 9 nothing. That's your final. Off we go to the West Coast. They'll start a three game road trip with the Los Angeles Dodgers tomorrow night. Our coverage starts at 9 30 Eastern with the Braves live. It's Drew Smiley and Julio Urias. In game one, Charlie Morton, Walker Bueller in game two, Freed and Scherzer on Wednesday night from historic Dodger Stadium. For Jeff Frank and our great crew, of course, our producer, Jill Gossard Cook. Great job by Jill and the gang. Appreciate you being with us tonight. Braves take two out of three from the Giants, and we'll see you when they get to the West Coast tomorrow night for game one with the Dodgers. Stick around. Braves Live, presented by Xfinity, is coming right up.